So far, we've learned how common events without a trigger work. They can either be called with another event or through a skill or item in battle or on the map. But in today's video, we're going to be looking at this thing right here, the trigger and the auto run and parallel triggers. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with auto run. The way it works is quite simple. If an event has a trigger set to auto run, that means it's automatically going to run and pause all other movement and other events while it's running. Same thing occurs with parallel. Only difference is the player has the capability to move around and other events can play during a parallel running event. So as you can imagine, it's going to be pretty simple. If you set a common event to be auto run, when this switch right here is true, this auto run common event will play the contents in here. So for example, let's make the switch right here common event one like that and then there'll be the contents of this common event just be this is common event one like that so what's going to happen is when this switch is true it's going to trigger our auto run event to automatically run which is going to call our common event which is going to be right here common event one like that now the thing is that common event can actually occur at any moment on your map as long as that switch is true so for example, let's create another event and just give it some random image like this. Let's go up here and set it so the switch which we had for the common event, so gonna be common event one switch. Let's turn it on like that. And now when we talk to this event right here, it'll turn the switch on, which will then allow that common event to play. So as you can see here, if we talk to this event right here and turn on that common event switch, boom, the common event will now play and then play and then play and then play. Cause the thing that's happening is the switch isn't turning off. So that auto run event is going to happen over and over and over and over again until that switch is removed. So a good thing to keep in mind when you do use an auto run common event is to make sure you have some sort of way to make it so the switch turns off. So we just set it so common event 1, switch is turned off at the end. So we'll run once, then turn the switch off. But now I'm going to be completely honest. This form of common event is actually not that very useful. You see, the thing is that a normal common event will still like restrict the player's movement when it occurs. And the only real purpose of this is having some sort of looping event, which you can only create using the looping event from eventing. But that's the reason why we're going to be focusing on this next thing right here, the parallel trigger. Which, as you know, will make this common event run in the background of the game instead of restricting the player's movement and making it the primary event. Now, there's actually quite a bit of things you can do with a parallel common event because you can do a whole ton of stuff without having to like stop your player from moving, stop other events from occurring. It just occurs at the background of your game. So for example, let's do something like, I don't know, control variables, set it so, we'll create a new variable called seconds, and we'll set it so we're adding a second every time this common event plays. So we're adding one second. And this should make it so, while this is in the background of the game, while your movement will not be stopped, this event will continue to add a second or one value to our variable called seconds. Once again, let's create another event. We'll put them right here for this example. Let's give them a new image and this person will give us a value of our variable ID two. So to do so, you can go to show text and do the value of variable. Oh, I have caps lock on two is, and then use the code backslash V and then the ID of the variable. So for example, variable ID two, and this will be replaced with the value of the variable. Anyway, now when we play our game, let's go to this person. He'll say the value of variable two is zero because variable two isn't increasing right now. But let's go over to this guy and turn on the switch. Now the switch is turned on. So when we go back to this guy, we'll see that, hey, the variable is now 242. And that's because every frame that common event is running in the background, making it so that variable is increased. So as you can see, it's increasing pretty fast. It's going at 808, it's going to be at 904, to 1001, and that variable just keeps keeps increasing. So if you did want to create a time system, what you could actually do is use a wait event. So we'll go to the second tab, go to wait, and set it to 60 frames, which will make it so what's going to happen is first, this occurs. Then it's going to wait for 60 frames. Then it's going to repeat, add another one to seconds. Then it's going to wait 60 frames. So what's going to do is it's going to make so every frame, or I mean every second, one is going to be added to our variable called seconds. And now as you can see, when we go turn on the switch and then we go interact with this guy, the value will be actually a lot lower. It's at two, it's at five, it's at six. It's not going up as extremely fast as it was before because now it's counting seconds instead of frames because now it's being interrupted with one wait event. But even though there is a wait event occurring, we can still move around because it's occurring within a parallel event instead of like a normal auto run or normal event. Now let's say for example, we want to create a time system that makes it so the tint of the screen changes based on what second it's currently on. So for example, we can go to a conditional branch on tab one, check to see the value of the variable. So if my seconds is equal to, I don't know, 10 like that, we can actually tint the screen. 
So for example, we'll go down to tab two, go to tint screen and set a different tint than normal. So we'll do sunset for this example. And we'll just set it so it has a wait for completion, 60 frame duration. Now that may have been a little fast, but let's see what happens. First, we'll turn on the common event. And now if we wait for a bit, we'll find that the screen will turn to a sunset type tint after 10 seconds. So wait for it, wait for it. Let's check see how many seconds there are. 10, and there we have it. The immediate moment it turned to 10 seconds, the screen tinted to a different color. And that's because during one of the repeats that occurred from this common event, it saw that, hey, seconds is equal to 10, so now let's tint this screen. And it's really that simple. Now, of course, there's a lot of crazy weird stuff you can actually do with this, because once again, this allows you to have parallel stuff occurring in the background that does not restrict the event motion or the player movement. So let's do another example. Let's say, for example, let's do a conditional branch. So conditional branch, let's say if, I don't know, actor T, for example, has the state of, uh, I guess, silence, like that. What we can do is actually make it so, if this is true, T will be afflicted with an animation. So if we go to tab 2, we can use the event show animation to show an animation on the player, for example. So we'll do on the player, we we'll use the animation, I don't know, hit thunder, for example, and wait for completion. So what's going to happen is, this thing is going to repeat, so if we're going to check see if T is hit by silence, if she is, that means you're going to play the thunder animation on T. It's going to wait for it to complete, then it's going to reach the end, then it's going to repeat and check again. So now, let's once again create another event. And this event is going to make so T has our silence state. So for example, we'll go back to tab one, we'll go to change state, we'll make it so T has added the silence state like that, and that makes it so when talking to this person, T will be given the silence state. So first, let's actually turn on the common event. So we'll just talk to this person. Now the common event is now active. Now if we give T the actual like state, which was silence, Boom, there we have it. That animation is being repeatedly played on T since they have the silence animation, as you can see also right here with this icon on T's little actor status. Now, I forgot to actually make an event to turn off the um, thing, but I, I, I guess, yeah, here it is. Pretty beautiful, right? And that's what you can accomplish with all these um, crazy little common events that have parallel processes. As you can see, even during a separate eventing process, it still occurs because it's a parallel process. Yeah, that's, that's all for now. If you enjoyed, give the video a thumbs up. You should subscribe. We're gonna do other stuff later. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be awesome. This video, this video is weird. If you have any ideas what you could do with parallel processing with your common events, leave them in the comments below. And that's all for this tutorial. Until next time, RPG Maker Tutorial ends.